Hi, I'm Ben, and I work on the Connect team here at Microsoft. Today we're going to look at one of the sample applications from our developer toolkit. It's called Connect Evolution. Let's jump in. So here what we're looking at is all of the raw data sources that come off of the Connect sensor. So let me just step up here. I'm going to maximize this window so it's easier for you to see what we're looking at. This is the depth data. Now, you'll notice there's some noise in here. Actually, here I'm under the cameras, I'm under some bright lights, and those do cause a little bit of IR interference. But I want you to notice how detailed the depth image is. We're getting data as close as 50 centimeters. So if I get closer than that, it'll go black there, as you see with my hand. But we're getting it from 50 centimeters all the way out to 8 meters. So you can see there's some furniture behind me, and then at 8 meters it kind of goes black again. But if you look, you can see wrinkles in my shirt, you can see all 10 of my fingers, you can see my face. If I get down here closer to the camera, you can see my mouth moving. Just an incredible level of fidelity and detail that we've added over the V1 sensor. So that's depth. And again, each of these individual pixels, we get data on how far away they are from the camera and it's in millimeters. Okay, so let's take a look at the next source. This is infrared. Now, uh, the story I like to tell here is as a kid, I remember going down to Kentucky to this place called Mammoth Cave, and it was so dark in there, you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. Well, if we were in a cave right now, you would still see this exact image. We're removing ambient light from the room, and this is just the light that the sensor is putting out. So this is a nice, clean, consistent source of data. You can use this in uh, computer vision, object detection. If I had a, uh, infrared paint or tape on anything, those would show up really well here. So if you wanted to use those to track objects like a magic wand or something like that. But again, just nice, clean, clean time of flight uh, based infrared data here. So that's infrared, it allows you to see in the dark. So let's take a look at the next one, color. Full 1080p color, we've got a wide field of view, horizontally and vertically. Um, we, we were 640 by 480 resolution in the first camera. We've upped that to 1920 by 1080 here. So again, nice, nice uh, color image that we're seeing. Now this next view here, I'm gonna get my, uh, get my uh, Windows phone here and I'm gonna turn on my uh, flashlight application. This is a view of the color inlaid on the infrared. And the point here is to show, I have my flashlight on, so if you look at the color image, you can see as the light shines on my face, that it's definitely affected by that external light source. But the infrared image, notice behind, it's totally removed. Again, this is just driving home that point that we're removing ambient light and just looking at the light that the Kinect is putting out. Okay, so moving on, I'm gonna move over here to our next source. So those were the eyes of Kinect. Now let's look at the ears. The Kinect has a mic array in the bottom. There's four distinct mics. And you can see here we've got this nice visualization of the, the waveform there as I'm talking. So I go quiet, you see the waveform go away. But if you notice that thing at the bottom, that arc, that's telling us the beam angle. Now as it turns out, I'm standing directly in front of the connect. But if I move over here to the right hand side, you'll see that beam angle changing. And if I move over here to the left, Again, you'll see it change again, and then our default is that it's going to signal out or it's going to point at the loudest sound in the room. Usually if I'm talking in a room, I'm usually the loudest person uh, in the room. But it's, uh, it's actually controllable in software, and you could say, oh, I want to track this person, and I want to kind of filter out other sound, and I just want to pay attention there. So those are the ears of Connect. Now let's look at the next thing. We do, in addition to those raw data sources that we just looked at, we've got these higher level interpretations that we're doing. So here's what we call body tracking. We used to call it skeletal tracking in V1. And what body does is there's 25 distinct skeleton joints on the body that we map. So you can see here, I've got hips, I've got knees. If I raise my feet, I've got an ankle and a foot joint. I've got shoulders. And what we've done uh, in comparison to V1 is you can have six people tracked at the same time and you're getting skeletons for all six of them. The, the skeleton has gotten much more stable, a lot less jitter. The hips have been lowered, so they're anatomically correct. And so if I really do some steep leans here, maybe I'm doing some, you know, <laughs> I've been sitting at my desk all day and I need to stretch out my back or something. You can see that um, we're tracking. We've added this joint up here, the clavicle joint, so you can actually see things like shoulder shrugs. 
We've also added two new joints to each hand. We've added a thumb joint and a tip of hand joint. You can see sort of this crab hand gesture. And then you may notice, what is, what's going on with those big green circles there? Well, we have what we call hand states. And the Kinect can actually detect my hand is open. We're visualizing that here with green. We can go red. Uh, and that's showing that it's a grip, right? So I can have one hand open and one hand closed. And then also we have this third hand state called the lasso, which is two, two fingers up like this. And we've seen developers use these for all types of creative input mechanisms into their applications. So this is the body data. Now, let's look at another visualization on this data. This is something that we call Blockman. And uh, this is, again, same data that we were looking at there for body, but each of those 25 joints also has something that we call rotation. So imagine you're creating a 3D game or some sort of a 3D environment with a character. I could, of course, just you know, walk around with my 25 joints, but when you add rotation, as I rotate my arms, you see all of that rotation here visualized with Blockman. So you could think about if we were doing a game and I really wanted to put some spin on the bowling ball, for example. Uh, but it's just, you know, I get it on my legs, on my, my lower leg. And so again, this is Blockman just showing another visualization there, one more level of our API that's there available for, for people to use. And then finally, I'm going to show this other visualization on the depth image. This is just, um, I don't know if you remember this from middle school, the colors of the rainbow, Roy, G, Biv, red, orange, yellow, and so on. We're just cycling through. So as I get up to 50 centimeters, it goes red, it goes you know, orange, yellow, all the way, and we're just cycling through each meter all the way out through eight meters. So this is a visualization on the depth. So let me just, uh, again, I'll show the uh, full, kind of UI there in its glory. This is a Windows Store application. Full source code is available for this application in our SDK browser. You can take a look at it. You can use it for your own demos if you want to show off Connect. Uh, also, the source code's there. You can take a look at it. You can reuse some of these components in your apps. That's Connect Evolution. Thank you.